Hey everyone, Rob here, and I have updates on the earthquake situation, potential eruption, building of fortifications, and protecting power plants in the Blue Lagoon, all wrapped in one video. Now, I haven't posted in a couple of days, and the reason is because it's not a huge amount of things going on. It's kind of same old, same old with a couple hundred earthquakes and uh, some land rise and things like that. But we're going to get into all of the stuff that has been going on over the last few days. Now, looking at the first bit of news, you can see in the picture here, the danger zone around Grindavik due to the earthquakes has been expanded and is stated in an announcement from the Icelandic Meteorological Office a few days ago. Now, as mentioned, there's still magma at a shallow depth under and near the town. Now, a geologist said that uh, with one of the news agencies here, the most likely scenario is still that a volcanic eruption will happen near Haugafet, which is kind of close to the Blue Lagoon area up near the top. Uh, but of course, now this announcement from the meteorological agency regarding the updated assessment map stated that the hazard area has been expanded based on new satellite images uh, that are from Svartusengi, and hopefully I'm saying that correctly, uh, which is up, and if I just click over here, we can see it's up here where this mouse cursor is, um, right to the you know to the right of the blue lagoon on the image here, and that's right near the power plant. Um, and so they're just saying that it's all been expanded from Spotsvangi and the magma corridor, and the data was discussed at one of the morning meetings of civil protection and experts from the weather service and the University of Iceland. Like everyone's opinion was taken into consideration. You can see. The real danger zone um, is kind of this this area C, then it goes into B, and then A is the you know least dangerous, I guess is what they're saying. Um, so those are the three danger zones that you can see on the map. The public safety and police uh, have the map as a consideration in planning for this area. And it had been previously stated on the Meteorological Agency's website that the data showed uh, changes that have occurred you know, over November 18th and 19th, and you can definitely see land rises in various areas uh, that they're saying. Now, if we go over here, talking about land rises, we'll just zoom in. We can see here that new satellite images of the area, Svartasengi and the Magma Corridor, together with other data were discussed. And uh, on the satellite images, we show, they're showing changes that have occurred from November 18th to 19th. And you can see clear signs of land rise in Sotsengi, which is this basically this bright red area. Uh, and you can see how much it's rising based on the colors. Um, so it's just clear land rise in this area uh, where they were looking at it, you know, from 18th and 19th and so forth. And it's a, in accordance with what has been seen at GPS stations around the area. Uh, and in the process that started immediately after the magma run on November 10th. Now, models calculated from the satellite images show that this land in Svartasengi is cons like rising up considerably faster than before the magma tunnel formed on November 10th. And generally, when a magma tunnel forms, land sinks into the middle of the tunnel, as we see in Grindavik, but rises uh, on either side of it. So signs of land rising in Svartasengi due to magma accumulation have been seen for some time. But then the effects of the formation of the magma tunnel are mixed into those measurements. Now, however, the fact that there are now clear signs of land rise in Svartasengi does not change the probability that it will erupt in the magma corridor. It is estimated, among other things, from the fact that the Earth's crust among, above the magma tunnel is much weaker than the Earth's crust above this you know, area of Svartasengi. So while there's not much seismic activity in the area uh, of this you know, deep red currently, uh, there's not that much of a chance of an eruption occurring there, apparently. Uh, but much more over the magma tunnel where the magma has the easiest way to reach the surface, which they're saying um, is kind of just south of this really bright area. Now, continued land rise and, and formation of the magma corridor shows that we are still in the middle of a chain of events. Uh, some were saying previously that this is a, a new sequence of events that could be thousands of years. Uh, but... They're saying that in the future, it's got to be assumed that the sequence of events in this region can change with little notice. So the meteorological agency, cooperation with experts from the University of Iceland, will continue to monitor the area, uh, as well as you know constantly reevaluate and interpret data that is is received. So much like this, 
Uh, now, if we're looking so one of these pictures, we're talking about the land rise. You can see this is from Grindavik. It's from uh, the news agency MBF. And you can just see what kind of damage uh, has been done to the town just on, on this example here. But when we're talking about all of this area around the Blue Lagoon and the power plant, now work is being done. Again, this is a, a drone photo from MBF, one of the news stations. Work's being done day and night to build fortifications around the power plant in Svartasenge. Also, the Blue Lagoon, let's not forget, which supplies tens of thousands of people with electricity and hot water in the Reykjanes Peninsula area. Now, Landsnet is taking steps to raise masts in Svartasenge, uh, which runs from the power plant to the substation, uh, and is done so that all of these areas are, are being built and, and they, they don't want to affect the line that they have there. So they're trying to hope to, to get some stuff out of the way. Now, some of the construction companies and, and the hot water companies, we start drilling to establish a backup water source in various areas uh, because there is a threat to the water supply in Svartasengi. And of course, this area provides both Reykjanesbyr and Sødnesbyr area, or about 25,000 people with drinking water. Uh, but all that aside, it's saying that they're estimating the construction will take about three weeks to complete which is is really really quick i mean we're talking about kilometers of, of of building and they're just day and night bring truckloads of this dirt and gravel and and sand and everything into the area to to really build a fortification now i'm wondering when all is said and done and they have all this there what do they do after the eruption or or if it doesn't erupt do they come and clear it out or is it just always going to be this sort of fortress around the power plant in Blue Lagoon? I'm not really sure if they thought that far, but taxpayers are paying for it. So there is still a lot of land rising at Svartasengi, and, and the new data that we just saw, magma continues to flow under there. And uh, of course, we saw that there is that uh, hazard and assessment map from the area around Grindavik and this area. The danger zone was expanded, divided into three parts based on the severity. And uh, again, it's most likely, if it is going to erupt, that the magma will emerge uh, in the middle of the corridor at Hagafat or Thorpjörn. So that's you know, some of these, these uh, really, you can see here, Hagafat on the right and Thorpjörn on the left. Now, one thing that's kind of peculiar though, is if it's gonna erupt in this area and they're building the defense to the left, it, it's almost like if the lava flows down in this way, um, the defenses aren't really going to do anything. But we will see how everything plays out. Uh, it's anyone's guess how things will work. Now, one thing that's been in the news quite recently, and I've felt the effects of this, is there has been a lot of criticism for the Icelandic Silver Protection and the police and, and various agencies that have closed this area, they're blocking access to GPS data and they're blocking access to external media to be able to access it. Now, it's not only the external media that they're blocking access to. Um, there is, at times, the Icelandic media. Uh, but it's been overwhelmingly in the news that uh, foreign journalists have come to Iceland been here for a week and they either do not get replies from civil protection when they email asking for access um, or they're just flat out refused access and then they look over and they see other news agencies or residents or businesses able to go in now one of the things that's come up regarding this is the media should be able to report on events that occur me i actually emailed the civil protection because I see that, of course, MBF and Roov and all these other ones, if we just go to Roov really quick, they all have live feeds of the eruption site. Now, what I've done is I have a camera that I would like to also place up on a mountain and, and get a live feed going as well. Um, so I emailed civil protection and, and I have not received anything i haven't gotten any response whatsoever i think that it would be nice for me to be able to um 
set up a live stream just like all the other uh, news agencies. But again, I'm looking for their live stream and I don't even see it. Uh, but again, all the news uh, agencies, they're having trouble contacting uh, the civil protection. No replies. And uh, yeah, basically in the news, I think it's been four or five uh, media agencies that have come to ISIN to report on this and they have been denied. So it's uh, it's not looking the best, especially when uh, other news agencies are allowed in and some are not. This updated danger zone hopefully allows for more people to go into certain areas. And we can see here maybe this, this orange area where it's least likely. But again, only time will tell. So uh, this actually turned out to be a longer video than I thought. Uh, a lot of stuff, I guess, covered the land rise all the fortifications, the new danger zone. Things are kind of as is, so we'll see if anything changes over the next 24 hours, 48 hours. Still earthquakes, still chance of an eruption, danger zones increasing, and as I said, fortifications are being built. So thanks so much for listening in. It was a lot to take in. Put in the comments if you have uh, some breaking news or if I said something incorrect because it's a lot of information that I covered. Uh, but until the next video, thanks so much.